Shinoda, and I have a little company called Riot Software, and I'm going to talk today a little bit about AIML content and editing. And uh, a lot of us in this room um, and watching have um, started bots from scratch using the AIML, and we all know it starts from just start with one single category, which kind of grows into two and four, and then you've got files upon files upon files, um, and it kind of spirals out of control. So I started down this path, uh, of course, a couple of years ago, and I went from, you know, I've had all these text files uh, loosely organized by, by topic, but some were alphabetical, and I was looking for a way to, to manage them. And in preparing for this talk today, um, I went out and did a little survey on AIML usage, and uh, a couple of you have in this room that answered that. I did get 24 full responses to the survey and nine partial responses, meaning um, that nine people only responded to select questions. And so I wanted to give a little bit of an idea of some of the results that I, that I got before talking about what we do with these results. Um, what first question I asked was, well, how many uh, AIML categories do you have to manage? And we had a lot of responses from with a, about 5,000 categories and under, and actually several responses with 100,000 100, and 250,000 and over. So we got, um, we actually do have some, some pretty heavy usage there. Uh, one of the other key questions that I asked um, was, are you interested in, in looking at your AIML in a spreadsheet? And I asked that question because that's actually how I'm, I'm really interested in uh, using it, and I was wondering if other folks thought like I did. And I got um, kind of a, a mix, uh, you know, third, third, almost a third, uh, you know, almost 20% said yes, they, they agree. Uh, almost 40% said no, they, they're not interested in the spreadsheet, and then we got half people, almost 50% said no preference. So it's kind of interesting. Um, the other other interesting question I asked about was, you know, were you interested in a standalone program versus a web-based app or, or no preference? And again, I asked this because uh, the, the app that I wrote, which we'll talk about in a minute, is a standalone app, and I am personally interested. I, I do I actually disconnect from the web every now and then. I do like to be able to do things on my computer without an internet connection. So I, I, I prefer standalone applications. Uh, but I understand a, a good portion of users do prefer a web-based app, and then there was a, a section that didn't, didn't add one or the other. And then another key question I asked were, what kind of features were important to you in your editor? And what I did was is I kind of listed um, all the features that I could think of and asked, please rate, um, you know, zero is least important, 10 is most important. And what came out of that is uh, the most important features were the ability to work with multiple files, um, being able to check the format errors, um, support for custom tags, being able to compare two or more files together, uh, being able to analyze matches. That, that's going to come up a couple times uh, today. Um, the fact that it's free is actually very important to folks. It's not a, not a surprise there. Um, and, and sorting and statistics were all the others. Some things that, that were less important was actually the view, whether whether you are looking at this as a spreadsheet or graphically. Um, configuration control, I was actually a little bit surprised uh, because that, that's one that's very important to me. I do want to know what my changes are if I do need to go back to an earlier version. Um, also, working on multiple bots at the same time. I, I actually dabble, I, I create bots for specific purposes, and I like to then uh, go back and, and compare uh, and contrast the two. And then allowing multiple users to work on uh, an AI ML set is also not as important. And then I asked them, you know, what editors are folks actually using out there? And I put together uh, you know, a very short list. I asked people about a simple AML editor, that, that's mine. Um, Datobot, uh, AI Dealer has an AML editor. Uh, Pandora Bots allows you to edit files. And then just do you use text files and spreadsheets. And text files is still the, the most people are, are using text files. Um, this question allowed people to select multiple, and almost everyone who responded uh, was using not just one thing to, to manage their, their content and manage and edit their content. And for the folks that answered other, I, I allowed them to tell me well, what other. And I came up with the AML pad, which is based on a programming. And actually, it was interesting because it's a, it really is an AML interpreter. It's not just, just an editor. Um, Eclipse, which is part of Rebecca AML. And then for those who are using text files, um, TextPad and TextMe were various text editors that are in use. And I actually use uh, TextPad, I'm a big fan of that because it allows you to have multiple text files at once. 
And then several people were either directly manipulating their own database or they made a, a custom editor to suit their needs, which is, which is kind of how I started uh, down this path. So I asked folks what the features that they liked most about the program they were using and it correlated with uh, the, the actual software they were using. So um, majority of respond, you know, respondents liked the fact that their editor was easy to use, it was simple, and uh, text files, uh, working in Pandora bots, um, NATO came up, uh, SAE, simple AML editor came up. Being able to you know, search through, you know, you've got thousands upon thousands of categories, being able to search, edit, and do simple uh, search and replace. And text files and spreadsheet, uh, that's what folks liked about those. And then category creation, uh, which is easy in, in a text file, you can copy and paste, of course. And then custom applications, uh, I think folks are, are writing to be able to create new content. And then some other responses that came out uh, were uh, being able to immediately test and actually, the funny thing is, as I uh, go on, that becomes um, more important to, uh, to me. And then the ability to, re uh, to view recursive um, responses, too, which actually, to me, goes hand in hand with the immediate testing. If you, if you write in a category um, that is referencing other categories, you want to be able to, to see what the um, answer might be the user. And then the limitations of the various tools that folks were using. Uh, errors, and we'll go through a, a lot, pretty much every, every piece of software has errors. Um, one person uh, was worried because their editor was based on an out-of-date interpreter. And then, you know, several of the features that uh, folks like uh, and are not for the software, you know, match analysis, um, being able to uh, search and replace on multiple records, and folks who like the spreadsheet mode um, really wanted something that had it, and testing, and then web-based. Uh, a lot of folks were looking for something that was uh, based on the web. So based on this, I started you know, compiling what I would think are you know, requirements. Well, when I set out to write the simple AIML editor, I had written down a set of requirements, but they were really for, for me and, and my usage. But then I was starting to think about well, what would be a generic set of requirements for anyone who was going to put forth an editor that was for not just for themselves, but for the masses. And so I started uh, just writing this little list. Um, and I'm gonna, what I was planning on doing is following, uh, following today is I was going to start to put this together um, in a little bit more, uh, refine a little bit more detail, kind of put it up for the community to kind of pick at. Um, I, I do like the idea if someone is going to decide, you know, I'm going to, I need, you know, none of the editors are suiting my needs, I'm going to write one and, and give it to the community too. It would be great if there's a, a basic set of functions that does take into account so it could work for uh, several people. And so, you know, some simple things like allowing for multiple files, uh, making sure that it recognizes the, the current published AML tag set, um, and you know, some other simple things. And then beyond beyond this, you know, there could be for any you know specific app, um, whether or not something's web based or standalone, that could be very very implementation specific. And then some other features I asked, you know, what were other things folks were looking for. Um, Easier, faster interface because that was actually a very key. Um, the ability to have categories dynamically created uh, based on based on a chat, analysis, uh, being able to spot opportunities in in your files, a pattern matching pattern matching algorithms and semantic anal analysis. All these kind of lead to the fact that editors are not just helping you edit your 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 categories, but helping create and analyze the content. You know, it's, it's great that you can roll up, you know, 10,000, 20, 100,000 in a spreadsheet, but if you, if you don't really know what you have and, and don't know what you need, I mean, you want things to help you create new content, and that's what people are really looking for.